Hi everyone, welcome to episode 5. So today we're going to be creating our terrain mesh, and we'll do this by generating a flat plane, and then just setting the heights of the individual vertices. Let's talk a bit about how this is going to work. So say we have a map that is 3x3, three three, so we'll have 9 vertices, and we need to store these in a one-dimensional array, so we'll label them 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now as you're no doubt aware, meshes are made up of triangles, so we need to supply an array of integers where each sort of set of three integers points to the vertices that make up that triangle. So say we start at vertex 0, we could make the triangle 0, 4, 4, 3, 3, 0. So to our triangles array, we'd add the integers 0, 4, 3. So that moves in a clockwise order and defines our first triangle. Then we'd want to complete the other half of the square, so we could go 4 to 0, 0 to 1, and 1 back to 4. So then to our triangles array, we'd add the integers 4, 0, 1. And you can imagine how this would continue for the rest of them, 1 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 1, and then 5 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 5, and so on. Now we need to be able to calculate beforehand how many elements our arrays are going to contain. So the number of vertices is easy enough to calculate. Vertices is equal, of course, to the width times the height. Working out the length of our triangles array is only a tiny bit harder. So we first need to know how many squares these vertices form. So that would simply be width minus 1 multiplied by height minus 1. And then each square is made up of two triangles of three vertices each. So we just need to then multiply this by 6. Okay, so in our Unity project, let's create a new c -sharp script. Call this the Mesh Generator. Let's open that up. So this is going to be a public static class, which once again means that we won't extend from mono behavior. And I'm just going to make a public static void method called generate terrain mesh. And as an argument, we'll take in the 2D float array of our height map. So we can easily figure out the width and height of the height map just by going int width is equal to height map dot get length zero and int height is equal to height map dot get length one. All right. So now we're going to want to loop through our height map. So let's say 4 int y equals 0, y less than the height, y plus plus, and 4 int x equals 0, x less than the width, x plus plus. So now we're going to want to start creating our vertices. So for convenience sake, let's just quickly create a public class down here outside of the mesh generator. We can call this something like mesh data. And this, for now, will just contain a public vector 3 array, our vertices, as well as a public int array for our triangles. And then this will have a constructor, public mesh data, which will just take an int for the mesh width and the mesh height. And we can then initialize our variables. So vertices is equal to a new array of vector 3s with a size of mesh width by mesh height. And then as we discussed, the triangles array will have a size of mesh width minus one multiplied by mesh height minus one, all multiplied by six. Then let's also just make a little convenience method for adding triangles. So you can say public void add triangle, which will take in the three integers for the three vertices. So you can just call that int A, int B, and int C. And then we'll need to keep track of the current index of our triangles array. So we can just say int triangle index. So here we can say triangles, triangle index is equal to A. And let's just copy that line. So then triangles 
with an index of triangle index plus 1 will be equal to b and triangle index plus 2 equal to c and then we can just increment our triangle index by 3. Okay, so having done that, let's go back to our generate rain mesh method and let's create a mesh data variable. Set that equal to a new mesh data and pass in the width and the height. All right, so now we'll also want an integer. We can call this our vertex index set to zero. And at the end of each loop, we'll just increment that by one so that we can keep track of where we are in our 1D array. So now, for example, we could say mesh data dot vertices with an index of our vertex index is equal to a new vector 3. And for the x-axis, we'll pass in the x value. And then for the y-axis, we'll pass in the value of our height map at the current point. So we'll go height map with coordinates x by y and then for the z axis we'll pass in the y variable. Now I'd quite like for the mesh to be perfectly centered on the screen so if we just think about this quickly say we have three points in order for these to be centered the one in the middle has to have an x value of 0 the one on the left has to have an x value of negative 1 and the one on the right a value of 1. So we can work out the x value of our leftmost point by going x equals width, or the number of points, minus 1, divided by negative 2. So in this case, that's 3 minus 1 equals 2, divided by negative 2 is negative 1. So that might seem terribly obvious, but it is just important that we don't forget to subtract 1 uh, from the width before dividing. So we can create a variable float top left x, is equal to the width minus 1 divided by negative 2f, the f being very important since it makes it a float so that this uh, isn't rounded to an integer once it divides. And then we can create float top left z is equal to height minus 1, same principle, divided by 2f. So not negative this time since uh, the z value is positive when we go up. So now when we're creating this vector 3, we can say the x is equal to top left x plus the x value, and then the z will be equal to top left z, and then we want to move down from top left, so we'll subtract the y value. Next we'll want to set our triangles, so we'll be looping through the map, and uh, for example when we're at vertex 0, we'll set both triangles for this square over here. When we're at vertex 1, we'll set the two triangles in this square. Vertex 2, however, there are no longer any triangles for us to set, so we skip over it to vertex 3, where we once again set both triangles for this square and same story for vertex 4. So as you can see, we don't need to worry about creating triangles when we're at any of the vertices along the right or bottom edge of the map. Let's consider one more thing. Say we write the indices of our vertices as i, then i plus 1, and that carries on for the width of the map. Then on the next line, we'll have i plus width, then i plus width plus 1, and so on. This means that our first triangle would go from i to i plus width plus 1 to i plus width, and our second triangle would go from i plus width plus 1 to i to i plus 1. We should now be suitably armed to take on these triangles, so let's say if x is less than the width minus 1 and y is less than the height minus 1, in other words we're ignoring the right and bottom edge vertices of the map as we spoke about, then we can add our first triangle by going mesh data dot add triangle. So this one goes from i to i plus map width plus 1 to i plus map width. And i, of course, is standing for our vertex index. So we go vertex index, vertex index plus width, plus 1. And finally, vertex index plus width. And then for our second triangle, we go from 
vertex index of plus width plus one to vertex index to vertex index plus one. All right, so that is the sort of fundamental part of our mesh generation done. Let's quickly worry about uh, creating a UV map so that we can add textures to the mesh. So in our mesh data, let's just create a public vector two array, UVs, and we need one of these for each vertex. So UVs equals a new vector two array with the size of mesh width by mesh height. So we basically just need to tell each vertex where it is in relation to the rest of the map as a percentage for both the x and y axis. So uh, this is a percentage between zero and one. So we can just say mesh data dot uvs with an index of vertex index is equal to a new vector two. So for the x, that will be x divided by the total map width, and we want that to be cast to a float. And then for the y, that's just y divided by the height. All right, then let's uh, go back to our mesh data class, and let's create a handy little method for getting the mesh from the mesh data. So we can say a public mesh create mesh, so we'll just say mesh, mesh equals new mesh. And then we can say mesh dot vertices is equal to our vertices array. Mesh dot triangles equals our triangles array. Mesh dot UV equals our UVs array. And uh, then we can finally just say mesh dot recalculate normals so that the lighting all works out nicely. And finally, we can return the mesh. So now instead of this generate terrain mesh method being a void, it's actually going to return mesh data. So at the end, we'll just add the line return mesh data. Uh, you might wonder why we return the mesh data as opposed to the actual mesh itself. And the reason for that is later on, we're going to implement threading so that uh, the sort of game doesn't freeze up as we're generating different chunks of our mesh. And one of the limitations of threading in Unity is that we can't do things like create new meshes from inside of the thread. We'll have to uh, return the mesh data and then outside of the thread, get the new mesh. All right, so let's work on getting this drawn to the scene now. So let's just save and go into Unity, go ahead over to my scripts folder and open up the map generator class. So in the draw mode enum, let's add in a third option to draw the mesh. So down here we can say else if draw mode is equal to draw mode dot mesh. And then we'll say display dot draw mesh, which uh, of course is a method we haven't created yet. And we'll pass in our mesh data by saying mesh generator dot generate terrain mesh, pass in the noise map. And uh, we'll also want to pass in the texture. So let's just uh, copy this line here for generating the texture. Okay, let's head over to the map display. So we can say public void draw mesh. This takes in the mesh data as well as the texture 2D. And we're going to want to get a little public reference to a mesh filter, as well as a, uh, a mesh renderer. Okay, so then we can simply say mesh filter dot shared mesh. Uh, it must be shared since we may be generating the mesh from outside of game mode. So we set that equal to mesh data dot create mesh, and then mesh renderer dot shared material for the same reason dot main texture is equal to the texture. Okay, let us go into unity and let's create a new empty object. Call this mesh. I'm going to add a uh, mesh filter as well as a mesh renderer component to that. Let's quickly go into the materials folder, add a new material, call this mesh material. 
And I'm just going to change the smoothness uh, down to zero. And then on the mesh, we can just open up this material slot here, drag that in. All right. And then on the map display class, we can drag the mesh object into both of these fields. And we should now be ready to change our draw mode to mesh. So here we have our little mesh being created and uh, it's very nice. It's very flat at the moment. Uh, we'll want to multiply those values by some factor so that they're more pronounced. Um, let's also just change the scale up to 10 by 10 by 10 so that it's in scale with the uh, with the plane. And then we can also maybe just add a light into our scene so that it's not so dark. Um, just give that a yellowy color. That's nice. And maybe just turn the intensity down a tiny bit. At the moment, of course, as I said, it's very flat. We'll uh, worry about that in the next episode. And also, it should be noted that we can't make very big maps. For example, if I change this to a thousand, oops, I missed a zero, a thousand by a thousand, we will get this error, mesh vertices is too large, and it will tell us that a mesh may not have more than 65,000 vertices. So we'll overcome that later on by splitting the mesh up into chunks. For now, we'll just have to keep our meshes reasonably sized. So I hope you've enjoyed, and until next time, cheers.